I don't know about you, but as a young person, I really didn't anticipate all the challenges that, le that would come my way in this life. And yet they probably pale in comparison with those experienced by many others, perhaps yourself, definitely my guest today, Leanne McCoy. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. When I read about in your book what you've been through, you've been through, you know, you lost your sister, you've had cancer, yeah. your kids have been, your daughter's been in an abusive relationship and just all the suffering of your life. How did you not get bogged down in that? Because I think that's the temptation, isn't it? Well, I think I kind of did get bogged down in it. That was the inspiration for writing this book. I used the scenario of that little plastic swimming pool that my grandchildren like to swim in. And when you don't change the water frequently, it gets kind of gunky. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times we find ourselves just loading on unfortunate event after unfortunate event. And before long, it's like we're stuck in this little pity pool of gunky feeling and, and victimization and discouragement. And we don't know how to get out. And I think it's even worse when you, if you grow up in a faith tradition where you're kind of been taught, if you follow Jesus, only good things will ever happen to you and you're gonna live right. this fabulous life. And then when it doesn't happen, you're thinking either I've messed up or God isn't who I thought he was, or maybe yes. he doesn't love me. And it's very confusing. I think I've been through that myself. That's exactly what happens. I think sometimes for those that trust God in their lives, it's harder. And so that's why in um, taking responsibility for the choices we make, the first couple of chapters I talk about what is real about life, the fact that life is hard, life is real hard, the fact that um, our dreams do get shattered, we're disappointed, and those are just realities that even someone who follows Jesus has to understand as a part of life. Mm -hmm. But then I also lay foundation of what's real about our relationship with God, what we really can expect when we enter into a personal relationship with Him. Mm -hmm. And with those foundations, we can begin to get unstuck from that way of thinking that because I trust Jesus, life should deliver this. And then life delivers this instead. And so what do I do with that? That's really what the book is all about. I've had some really poignant conversations lately with women and, you know, really talking about how when you've been disappointed by life, you kind of get this kicked puppy syndrome where even when the times are good in your life, you're not enjoying them because you're kind of like bracing, mm. you know, for the next kick that life is going to mm. deliver to you. Mm. And a lot of women and myself at different times as well have lived that way. Mm. How do you get to the point where you're not, you know, kind of bracing yourself because mm -hmm. of the pain, your past pain, mm -hmm. basically, that you've experienced when you weren't expecting it? Well, and that's, and it's truly easy for that to happen because you just, um, you had a way of thinking one way and then that gets blown to smithereens and you have this whole new way of thinking, okay then. And what we want to do is not be under that kind of a, of a cloud. And so what I really talk about, and I think, <clears throat> excuse me, that a real way to handle that is to camp out in Romans 8:28 to know for a fact that the God who knows us loves us and that the God who knows us and loves us promises to us that he's going to work everything together for good. Mm -hmm. And when we know that, then instead of being afraid or living under a cloud of what could possibly happen, we can instead begin to open our eyes to an adventure of getting to know a God that may be a little bit different than the God we thought we knew and getting to experience life in ways that we didn't know we would experience. I think, you know, I mentioned faith traditions where you think everything's good. A lot of times we build these little barriers around ourselves with the Bible where we say, if I do this, God will do that. Yes. And if I do this, God will do that. And yes. then when something different happens, you start thinking, I don't know how to anticipate what God will do now. It's really scary. You're like this yeah. un, unpredictable God. Right. He's unpredictable. And that's where, and, and that does happen because of the way our minds rationalize. We think A plus B equals C. One plus two equals three. And then we have one happen, two happens, and then three does not result. And what mine, one of mine has been, if I rear my children in a godly home, if I teach them moral standards, if I invest time and energy into their lives, then they in return are going to choose what's right, go to college, get married, have babies, live happily ever after. Yay. And so see, I have already in my mind created 
the end of the equation when along the way they may not choose what's right. They, they have freedom to make choices for themselves too. They may um, get in situations that are devastating like uh, the cycle of domestic abuse. They, they may get pregnant as a teenager outside of marriage. These things can happen. Mm -hmm. But what happens with God is, okay, I did this. This is what's happening. It's very unexpected, but yet God is still there. And he will trump whatever it is in there that threatens to um, cut short his faithfulness. God will trump that. And then he will deliver an end of that equation that is exceedingly abundantly beyond all you could ask or imagine. It's just, it's different. Yeah. And it's not bad different. It's just different. And sometimes it's just hanging on with faith till yes. you see that day. Well, yes. we want to continue this conversation. We're going to come back with some more practical tips about how you can overcome the disappointment and emotional pain in your life. Stay tuned.